Welcome to this video lecture of water quality parameters. Now first we have to understand that what is the importance of water. Since water is an essential commodity to all life form. Without water we cannot expect any type of life. Every living thing that is plant, animals and people must have water to live. Water is used in almost all activities of life support systems. Water is a major abiotic factor in the environment. Now if we talk about natural water, the endless circulation of water between the atmosphere, lithosphere, hydrosphere and biosphere is known as hydrological cycle. We get water from precipitation of water vapor in the atmosphere. Worldwide, if we talk about the distribution of water, the distribution of water over land is not even, it is uneven. Earth has tremendous amount of water. Three-fourths of the earth's surface is covered by water. But 97% of that water is in seas and oceans. And this water is saline. Only 3% is present on the continent which is fresh water. Now what is water quality? Why we are talking about water quality and what is this? Water has its own color, taste, odor and constituents. And not all water can be used for all purposes. For example, you cannot use sea water for drinking purpose. The suitability of this water is determined for different purposes according to its quality parameters. Now, on an average, each person in a developed country use about 260 to 270 liter of water in a day. So we can say that quality of water is equally important as the quantity. Even if it is present in huge amount and if it, is, it cannot be used for some intended purpose, then it is of no use. And what if we talk about the characteristic of water, water is a very good solvent. But water never occurs in its pure form. All water contains some suspended or dissolved substances in it. The quality of water is determined by these substances only because water has the ability to dissolve many inorganic and organic substances. So the water quality, what is water quality? Before that, we have to understand that what is the condition of water. And the condition of water is determined for some specific purposes or for its intended use only. Now, if I am taking word intended use, it means that for what purpose you are going to use that water. It is for domestic use, it is for agricultural use, it is for commercial use or it is for firefighting use. Now, for every purpose, intended purpose, the characteristic, the quality, of water is different. These water quality are measured by comparing it by some standard. They are known as water quality standards. According to certain characteristics, we had divided this water quality in three broad categories. They are physical water quality parameter, chemical water quality parameter and biological water quality parameter. Actually, the what affected the water quality is more important because we have to understand that why the quality of this particular water has been changed. Now, it can be due to human use that is uh, for supplying to the industry or the water coming out from the industry for supplying for agricultural purpose or the water which is returning after uh, irrigation. 
in the same way the climatic conditions it affects the water quality due to the shift in the climate there is a change in the characteristic of the water the life form which are dependent on water quality now they they are changing due to the change in the climate in the same way the weather the weathering conditions it is hot or it is cold so according to all those reasons the water quality changes time to time now in this video lecture i am concentrating myself for physical water quality parameters now what are physical water quality parameters those parameter which respond to sense of sight sense of touch sense of taste and sense of smell the five senses which god has given to us now according to these parameter the physical water quality parameter can again classified as temperature suspended solid turbidity odor taste and color now these are several parameter on which we check the quality of water for their physical condition now if we talk about temperature so in starting i will discuss the first parameter that is temperature actually this parameter is not used to evaluate directly but it is one of the most important parameter in natural surface water stream because the temperature governs up to a large extent the biological activity or biological species present in the water the chemical reaction which happens in water it affect the temperature they have also affect the uh, on the solubility of gases in the water now if we talk about the source for which had affected the temperature is temperature of natural water system respond to many factors the ambient temperature that is universal temperature removal of forest canopies and irrigation return flow affect the quality affect the temperature of the water use of water for dissipation of waste heat in industries and subsequent discharge of heated water is another source so if we talk about the impact which can come is at lower temperature range the biological activity that is utilization of food supply growth reproduction etc is less but if the temperature increases biological activity also increases that is an increase of 10 degrees centigrade is sufficient to double the biological activity even accelerated growth of algae is more in high temperature range even higher order species such as fish uh, are affected by temperature and due to by dissolved oxygen level most chemical reaction involving dissolution of solids are accelerated by increase in the temperature even viscosity of water is uh, increases with the decrease in the temperature so it is essential for all environmental studies generally we use uh, analog or digital thermometer to measure the temperature of the water and it is done at the situ only the unit of thermometer is degree celsius and the temperature of surface water is influenced by the atmospheric conditions most of the time the temperature of ground water is controlled by thermal characteristic of bedrocks and the depth 
the next parameter is test and odor the source for test and odor is substances with which water comes in contact into the nature or during human use may impart to the test and odor they may include mineral metal salt from the soil product from biological reaction and constituent of wastewater now what is the impact actually it is aesthetically displeasing to measure it we can do we can do it by using gas or liquid chromatography but since it is an expensive experiment that is why we use sonoscope method in this method it is generally used to measure the odor the unit to measuring the odor is ton t o n that is threshold odor number and what is this ton ton is a ratio of volume of diluted sample to volume of undiluted sample actually the ton represent the dilution ratio at which odor is high, hardly detectable generally ton testing is done in cold water because increase in temperature may change the taste and odor odor and test are expressed by threshold odor number as it represent dilution ratio at which odor cannot be detected now if we talk about its use this parameter is used for potable water basically a epa that is environmental protection act does not have any standard for this but a maximum of 3 ton is recommended by public health service as a guideline for public water supply the threshold number should be 1 but it should never exceed 3 the next parameter is color water whose color is partly due to suspended matter is said to have an apparent color and the color which is contributed due to dissolved solid is known as true color for us apparent color is not very important because the water can be screened or filtered and this apparent color is removed for us the basic concern is of true color now if we talk about the source after contact with the organic debris such as leaves conifer needles weeds water from tannins acids and humid they all impart yellowish brown color iron oxide cause reddish water and manganese contribute to the brown color or blackish color industrial waste may add substantial color to the water there are thousands of chemicals in the industry and they can impart different type of color to the water now if i talk about the impact it is not aesthetically acceptable because highly colored water is unsuitable for laundry purpose for dye industry for paper making for beverage industry for any type of industry it is not permitted other thing is organic compound which are causing the color may exert the demand of chlorine and hence they reduce the effectiveness of disinfection by chlorination if we talk about the measurement by naked eye we can detect the color by comparing it with a standard water sample 
with solution of different color intensities in a glass tube which is known as Nestler's tube. Even this can be also found by using spectrophotometric technique. The unit for color is TCU that is true color unit. One TCU is equivalent to color produced by one milligram per liter of platinum in the form of chloroplatinate ions. Actually, these colors are not only object objectionable from health point of view, but they spoil the intended use. Generally, if we talk about the use of the color, this parameter is not done for uh, wastewater analysis. In potable water analysis, common practice is to measure only the true color, not the apparent color. And that true color, which are produced by organic acids, by that we can found the effect of uh, humic substances in the water. Now, if we talk about the permissible limit, the permissible limit for water, for especially for drinking water, is 5 ppm. But it should never be more than 25 ppm. It is, it has to be rejected when the water, the color of the water is more than 25 ppm. For public supply, the color on cobalt scale should not exceed 20 and should be preferably less than 10. The standard unit of color is that which is produced by 1 milligram of platinum cobalt dissolved in 1 liter of distilled water. The next parameter is turbidity. Now what is turbidity? It is a measure of extent to which light is either absorbed or scattered by suspended material in the water. Since scattering and absorption are a function or are influenced by both size and the surface characteristic of suspended material. Therefore, Turbidity is not a direct quantitative measurement of suspended solids. Now, if we talk about the source of the material which are causing the turbidity, are they are result from the erosion of colloidal material such as clay, silt, rock fragments and metal oxides from the soil vegetable fibers and microorganisms also contribute to the turbidity. Detergents, emulsifiable agents or emulsifying agents, they produce a stable collide, which also result in turbidity. Now, if we talk about the impact, actually, colloidal material, they provide and adsorption sites for chemicals that may be harmful or may cause undesirable taste and odor. Even disinfection of turbid water is very difficult due to adsorption characteristic of certain collides of some collides. Now, if we talk about the measurement they are measured photometrically by determining the percentage of light either absorbed or scattered. Now, these measurements can be done on by in two types. If that is based on the absorption principle, then they are classified as turbidity rod or Jackson's turbidity meter.
and if the experiment is emphasized on a scattering principle then Bailey's turbidity meter or modern nephrometer can be used. Now if the experiment is based on absorption principle and if that experiment is based on the turbidity rod then the turbidity can be easily measured in the field by using this turbidity rod. Now a this turbidity rod they consist of an aluminium rod which is graduated as to give turbidity directly in silica units that is in milligram per liter. Now this turbidity rod with platinum needle is inserted inside the water and at the depth where this platinum needle just become invisible it gives the turbidity in the ppm parts per million as depth of insertion increases the reading of turbidity will decrease it is generally a field method based on uh, absorption principle the next method which is based on absorption principle is Jackson's turbidity meter. In this method, the turbidity can be measured easily in the laboratory with the help of instrument which is known as turbidity meter. In general, a turbidity meter works on the principle of measuring the interference caused by the water sample to the passage of light rays. Now in this Jackson scandal turbidity meter, the height of water column will be more for less turbid water and vice versa. Longer the, uh, the light width, the more is the turbidity. Such a turbidity meter cannot measure turbidity lower than 25 JTU, that is Jackson's turbidity unit. It can be used for natural sources only, but for the water which is coming from industry or the waste water which has been treated, at those places we don't use the turbidity meter or turbidity rod methods. In that condition, we have to use the other method that is a scattering principle method when the turbidity is more than 25 JTU. The other methods are based on scattering principle. In the scattering principle, we use two type of instrument. One is Bailey's turbidity meter and the other one is nephrometer. In Bailey's turbidity meter, one of the two glass is filled with water sample. In one glass, there is a water sample whose turbidity is to be measured. And in the other, it is filled with a standard water solution of known turbidity. Then the electric bulb is lighted and blue color in both the tube is observed from top of the instrument and by this we can find out the turbidity. Actually both Bailey's turbidity meter and nephrometer they are based on color matching techniques. But in nephrometer a very small turbidity even of one unit or less can be measured. So generally they are used for domestic water supply purposes. In Bailey's turbidity meter, light intensity is measured in the direction of incident light only. Whereas in nephrometer, light intensity is measured at the right angle to the incident ray that is at 90 degree. 
Hence, nephrometer is based on scattering principle. In this, a chemical which is known as formazine is used in place of silica dioxide. That is why the turbidity unit is also sometimes called as FTU, that is formazine turbidity unit. So, if we discuss in the last about the units of turbidity, then we had talked about three units that is JTU, FTU and NTU. JTU means Jackson's turbidity unit. One JTU is equal to one milligram of silica dioxide in one liter of distilled water. If we talk about FTU, then which is a formazin turbidity unit, a suspension of 1.25 milligram per liter hydrazine sulfate and 12.5 milligram per liter hexamethyl intramine in water has a turbidity of 1 FTU. And the next one is nephrometry turbidity unit. Now, if we talk about the use, the application part of turbidity, then Environmental Protection Act EPA specify a maximum of 1 FTU for potable water. But Water Works Association has kept 0.1 FTU as a goal of potable water. The next parameter is suspended solid. Now, what is suspended solid? Solid can be found in water in three form. That is suspended form, colloidal form and dissolved form. When the size of the particle is 10 to the power minus 1 to 10 to the power minus 3 mm, then it is known as suspended solid. This size of solids are present in the water and are supported by viscous force and buoyant force within the water. If we talk about colloidal solids, the size of colloidal solids are 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 6 mm size. They are very small particles. Technically, they are suspended particles, but they exhibit the characteristic of dissolved solid most of the time. And the third one is dissolved solid. When the particle size is less than 10 to the power minus 6 millimeter, then they are known as dissolved solids. It consists of molecule or ions which are held by molecular structure of the water, then they are known as dissolved solids. Now, if we talk about in this physical water quality parameters, I, uh, we are trying to focus only on suspended solids because dissolved solids can be a part of chemical analysis, not of physical analysis. We cannot see them, we cannot touch them, we cannot feel them. So, if we talk about the source of suspended solid, they consist of inorganic particles or organic particles or of immiscible liquids. Inorganic solid such as clay, silt and other soil constituent which are common in the surface water. Organic particles such as plant fiber, biological matters such as algae, cells, bacteria, etc. all of them found in the water. Even industrial use of water may result in wide variety of suspended impurities which can be either organic or inorganic. Immiscible liquids such as oil and grease are often found in wastewater. Now if we talk about the impact, the first impact is they are aesthetically displeasing and they provide adsorption sites for chemical and biological agents to do their activity. 
biological active suspended solids they may include disease causing organisms such as toxin producing strains of algae is a very big problem it is carcinogenic also now if we talk about the measurement of this suspended solid that this can be done by doing gravimetric test the unit of suspended solid is milligram per liter or parts per million now if we talk about the use basically they are used to measure the quality of waste water effluent environmental protection act has set a maximum of 30 mg per liter for most waste water discharge now after seeing all those parameters if we know if we understand them that what are physical water quality parameters from where they are coming in the water what impact it is giving to human body how you can measure them and what is the use what is the standards for them which epa or any other agency has set if we understand all these things then by understanding only this physical water quality parameter we can provide the proper treatment to the particular water or waste water for its intended use as an environmental engineer it is our prime duty to provide the good quality of water in right quantity to every user and for that the understanding of physical water quality parameter is very important thank you for your patient hearing